Now in all CPR or patient care, the most important thing to check before you ever engage in care is whether or not the scene is safe. If the scene is safe, there isn't any electrical hazards, there are no um, uh, chemical hazards, there's nothing in the environment that's going to actually cause us harm, the scene can be declared safe. Along with that, it also means does the rescuer have personal protective equipment? Gloves and a CPR shield with a one-way valve barrier to protect the rescuer from bloodborne pathogens. If the scene is safe, if your gloves are on and your shield is available, or there's no blood or body fluid in the environment, you're now ready to be able to rescue safely. As always, we're going to see that the patient is on the ground, they appear to need some help, but we don't know what's going on yet. So we call out to the patient, hey, are you all right? There's no response. Are you all right? Can you hear me? I tap and shout on the collarbone. At the same time, I'm assessing this person to look to see if they're breathing normally or not. If they're not breathing normally, chances are they're in agonal respirations. Agonal respirations is a condition where the, the body just hasn't stopped trying to take a breath yet. It's kind of that, <clears throat> that occasional gasp where they're trying to breathe but they can't. It's, not, it's really not exchanging gases and it's not effective respirations. We're gonna consider agonal respirations, no respirations at all. So if the patient is breathing abnormally or not breathing at all, we're gonna make note of that. So no movement, no response, no breathing. At that point, if there's a bystander, I'm gonna activate EMS or call a code. You in the plaid shirt, go call 911 and come back. I might need your help, come on back and help me when you're done. Then I'm gonna turn back to the patient and at this point, as a healthcare professional, I'm going to check <clears throat> for a carotid pulse. Now you'll notice I'm finding the, the Adam's apple, and I'm walking my two fingers off the side of the windpipe in that valley between the neck muscle and the windpipe. I'm checking for no more than 10 seconds. But please keep in mind, this is not really the most important aspect when we prepare to do CPR. If you can't tell whether there's a pulse or not and the patient is not breathing, not breathing normally and is unconscious, we're going to begin chest compressions and CPR. Because there's a lot of studies showing us that if you can't tell if there's a pulse after you've been trained to check for a pulse, chances are if they're unconscious, not breathing, they don't have one. So we're going to move towards CPR. In this case, I do not feel a pulse and I'm going to find the center of the chest interlock my fingers and begin my 30 chest compressions at least two inches deep and at least a hundred times a minute. That's more than one a second. This is fast. It's a lot of circulatory type compressions and it's going to become exhausting in time. And we'll cover that in just a minute. But now we're going to start our compressions. Leaning over the patient's body, elbows locked straight, fingers intertwined. I'm going to pull up on the bottom hand so that all that's on the chest is my palm and I begin my 30 compressions. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11 and 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. I'm gonna get my mask, cover the nose and mouth with a head tilt, chin lift. I'm gonna go ahead and give two rescue breaths. Both breaths went in, and 30 more compressions. One, and two, and four, and five, and six, and up to 30 more. I'm gonna continue this 30 compressions and two breaths until an AED arrives, or until emergency medical services arrive, or a code team arrives and takes over. If I have a bystander, I told you that this is exhausting, and it is. Every couple minutes or so, I'm gonna start feeling like I can't go on, because the chest compressions are gonna get less deep and less effective. If there's a bystander who could be quickly taught how to do chest compressions or already knows CPR, we're going to get them in on this to give me a break so that I can restore my own strength and hopefully then take over for them in a couple minutes so that we can continue this 100 compressions or more per minute, nice, deep, at least two inches deep, over and over and over to try to circulate the residual oxygen and the oxygen that we're putting in the body 
to try to save the brain, save the heart, save vascular organs if possible, or at least slow down the dying process so that when an AED arrives or when help arrives, we've got a viable patient that has a chance at making it out of this cardiac arrest situation. Scene is safe, my gloves are on, my CPR shield's available. Sir, can you hear me? Can you hear me? There's no response. Help, somebody help me. You in the plaid shirt, go call 911 and come back. Checking for a pulse. There's no pulse. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten and eleven and twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. <clears throat> One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and ten, twelve and thirteen and fourteen and fifteen and sixteen, and seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Two more breaths, thirty more compressions. I'd continue this until an AED arrived or until EMS showed up. <laughs>